Hi, I'm so excited. Today I'm going to my first ever um, art exhibition. It's for animal equality. But this is also the first time I am ever vlogging in public. And I am very nervous. Okay. <laughs> Immediately tripped over something. So yeah, Animal Equality, amazing charity. They are ranked as one of the most effective charities, which means that um, for the money you give them, they do the absolute most amount of work for animals. And they also have quite a big buffer of money they can still take on board. So even if a charity is like super effective, um, if you flood it with a load of money, they're, they're gonna get overwhelmed and can't do much with it. But I think off the top of my head, Animal Equality still have a buffer of like a few million pounds or dollars or whatever. So yeah, well worth donating to them. It is so weird walking around like this. I basically, I'm fine when I'm on the street on my own, but as soon as anybody else dares to be in public, I have to turn off the camera and stop because I actually can't cope with the embarrassment. It is too much. Also, the other thing is that it's art. I don't. I don't, I don't get art, I don't, I don't know what to do with it. Like obviously if something, if somebody can create a really realistic painting, um, then that's just like pure talent, like anyone can appreciate that. But when it's the sort of like modern, abstract, I'm just like, like every time I go to the Tate, I'm like, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I don't get it. So I'm scared that I'm going on my own. I'm scared of making new friends. And I'm scared that I'm not going to like the art. <laughs> I'm not going to know what to do. But I have heard they have vegan wine. So I'm very excited. I think I'm going to drink quite a lot. I might actually get a tinny for the road on the way just to cope with this whole situation. This is, this is a lot. I mean, this is a dead quiet road. I don't think I could do it on a road busier than this. I'm actually running really late. I didn't realise how slow walking would be. So I don't think this type of booze. And I feel like everyone who looks at me hates me. And I am paranoid. I'm going in sober. This is horrific. <laughs> well, since I'm running so late, may as well have a little chat with you about animal equality. Um, so they mainly do um, investigations. That's what they're best at. So I think they're the animal charity you can do the most like, effective investigations for the cheapest. Um, so yeah, if you've seen any footage of these horrific conditions that factory hens live in, or they do a lot of bullfighting, a lot of pigs, like there's a big pig one in the UK, probably these guys behind it. So yeah, pretty impressive. So yeah, if you do want to learn more about um, effective altruism, especially with animal charities, there's a really good um, organisation called ACE, Animal Charity Evaluators. They're the guys who decided that um, animal equality are one of the best. Um, they know more than me, so I'll trust them. <laughs> So when I got there, I thought it would be a bit inappropriate to walk around vlogging, chatting about everything to myself like a weirdo. <laughs> so I'm adding in this audio over the top afterwards. So yeah, when I got there, I was so nervous. I was all on my own. I made a beeline for the food. I didn't really know what I was doing, but everyone there was so lovely. I had two or three people come up to me and start a conversation because they could just tell I was on my own and a bit lonely. <laughs> So yeah, I did a walk around and on this wall, there were all of the printouts of art. And then over here, it was all of the original canvases and everything was for sale. It was a blind auction for the canvases and fixed price for the printouts. This one I thought was actually really interesting because I walked around the room and I was taking it all in. There was something different about, with modern art, I guess I just never really know the meaning behind it. Like it just doesn't really, speak to me. But this, I obviously know the meaning behind all of these things. I know the meaning behind um, how we consume animals and the animal testing and the way that we treat them. I just, I fully got everything that the artists were trying to convey. It all made perfect sense. The only one I didn't quite get was this one with the man tied to the back of the cow. I don't know, maybe it was just a little bit too deep for me. I just, I walked around, I got all of it and I looked at that like, hmm no idea and just carried on and it turns out one of the guys I was talking to later was asking me if I'd um, bought anything and I said oh not yet 
And I asked him if he had, and he said, yes, that one over there with the man tied to the cow. And I was like, no way, explain it to me. It's the only one that I just didn't really get. The explanation that he gave and the meaning that he saw was that um, this guy is tied to a consumption of dairy and beef, but also he's tied himself there. He's holding the ropes tied. And if he wanted to, he could be free. He could get up and leave at any moment but he chooses not to because this is what's normal for him. So yeah, what else was there? Oh, there was one that really spoke to me. It was this one of the two babies with the, um, with the mouth guards. Because I've seen this in real life on baby cows and the idea is, is it stops them suckling from their mother so then there's more milk for humans to consume. And I don't know, there's just so many of these things I've seen before. Like I've seen the dogs being experimented on with the smoke and I've, I don't know, I've, I've seen a lot of these images before in different ways, but I have never seen one like that. And that just, oh, I really like caught a lump in my throat. That was the first one that really got me going. I mean, not only do these weaning rings look like something out of a horror film and obviously blocking the calf from the milk is just sad anyway, but the worst part is the spikes that they put on it, which means that when a calf goes to drink from the mother, it hurts the mother and she kicks it away. And I just think, oh God, that's just so sad to think about. And then to imagine it on a tiny little baby and the baby's crying for milk, but every time it goes for milk, the mum gets angry and pushes it away because they're both hurting. It's just sad. <laughs> like, it's really powerful artwork. Like it really did put a lump in my throat. But also I just thought it was like quite interesting how people were buying these posters and putting them off in the house. Like they're a bit too hardcore for me. <laughs> like I don't think I could live with that much brutality in my house every single day. Um, but when I was looking at the original prints, one that really stood out to me was this beautiful little cow. I just fell in love with him so much and I read his little backstory. He was a real male dairy calf. He was photographed by Suffolk and Norfolk Animal Save on his way to livestock market. The whole point of these animal saves is that they hold vigils. They take photos of the animals, normally on the way to slaughterhouses, but it could be to markets and other things just give them water, some attention, and also take photos just to show the world that they're not these happy, smiley animals that we see on the adverts. They're terrified and they're battered and bruised and just living in these awful conditions. This little boy would have been sold at around 10 to 14 days old. So instead of being killed on the farm immediately because he's considered useless, um, he would have been sold into beef farming. Um, and he'll be killed at 36 months old, which is the prime time to kill cows for beef. But his natural lifespan would have been up to 20 if he'd been allowed to live. The artist has written a little piece about him saying, he was being treated just like any other commodity with little value. However, by painting him and adding a flower crown, does that not make the viewer see him differently? Worth more? I'm glad I can capture his face forever in paint to represent all those who have been murdered for someone else's pleasure. And the artist is Naomi Joy. And it's called, How Do You Like Me Now, Cow? I just, I don't know, I love it so much and I fell in love with it and we bid on it and we won it. <laughs> and we brought him home with us and we love him so, so much. And the art is incredible. It's like I was talking about earlier when it's like really realistic art. Oh my God. It's just flawless. It's really impressive. One last thing to mention is that they were advertising this book that sold on Amazon, The Art of Compassion. And I was flicking through it and I was like, you know what? Like for some of the more gory artworks, I can't handle them on my wall, but I can absolutely handle them in a book. Like this is perfect. But also, I'd had a couple of wines <laughs> and I was overhearing one of the artists saying that he believes that everyone is an artist and it doesn't matter what your talent is, everybody has artist potential inside them. And I was just sort of drunk, nodding along like, yeah, I'm an artist. <laughs> I'm not, by the way, zero talent. But as I was flicking through this book, I was like, I really want to try. Like, I really want to try and make something. I'm not saying it will be good. I'm certainly not saying it will be book worthy or on the same level as any of these guys. But I still want to try it. 
so yeah i think that might be a future video <laughs> okay that's it bye oh also i am growing my channel i am brand new to youtube this vlog was big and scary for me so if you could give me a little subscribe that would be so lovely and if not don't worry about it and i will see you next week bye